David, we'll start with you. The energy market operator says coal generation will have exited the system in 15 years, yet Australia will not be able to build and install enough renewable energy generation to meet the target of 43% emissions reduction by 2030. Are we seriously ready for this transition? Well, we've got no choice. We have to be ready. And I know your introduction said that coal is the most reliable. Actually, if you look over the last few summers, our very ageing coal-fired power fleet are the least reliable energy sources. They're the ones that are going out when it gets really hot uh, because they're like 40, 50, 60 years old. Uh, the most reliable energy we have, the most dependable, is our solar and wind. The cheapest that we have, um, including in the last summer, the cheapest has been uh, solar and wind. Renewables are driving prices down. If you want unreliable power, if you want to see blackouts in southeast Queensland, then just pretend that these old clunker coal-fired power stations are going to carry on, because they're not. The energy market regulator says they're the, the least reliable. So we've got no choice. We've got to build it. It's the cheapest thing we can build. It's the most reliable in the long term. And it's actually bloody good for the climate. Well, it's $1.5 trillion in the next de decade. It's not cheap. Well, we have a very large economy. We've got a large continent. And we're going to be building an energy system that our kids and our grandkids and their kids can actually reliably depend upon. We have the benefit yeah. of all the investment that our great-great-grandparents put into the network. And thanks for them. We've had great cheap power. That investment has run down yeah. and we need to invest for the future now. OK, Barnaby, over to you now. David's just said that the coal that we've got at the moment, it is unreliable. What, where do you sit on this? Are we facing a, a blackout right now? Well, um, I'm going to call rubbish on everything David just said. Um, let's start from uh, position number one. Mm -hmm. Renewables are not cheap. Renewables are incredibly expensive. And the way to test the rhetoric is to look at your bill. Your power bill is going through the roof as renewables accelerate up. And the reason for that, obviously, is the intermittency and the way power is sold. It's sold in five-minute blocks. So sometimes, when the wind's not there and the sun is not shining, the price of that power goes through the roof because it's just not there. So to replace something that's not working with more things that don't work is a real sign of lunacy. Well, what we have, just itself, Net Zero Australia, which is a green group, mm. says that the cost to get to our 2030 target is $1.5 trillion. That's $1.5 billion. That's $1.5 million. And the 2050 target, this is their words, $7 to $8 trillion. Wow. That is more than the, re the, re the recapitalisation, the rebuilding of Western Europe after the Second World War in today's monetary terms. Right. So let's dispense with this being cheap. And the next thing you have to say is let's look at some of the examples right at the moment. Yeah. See... For there to be, you've got to compare apples with apples. Yep. So you've got to compare 24-7 coal-fired power or 24-7 nuclear power with intermittent power. And the way you make intermittent power 24-7 is to have batteries or pump hydro. And let's look at one of them. Snowy Hydro 2.0. Yeah. <clears throat> it started at $2 billion. It's now $12 billion yeah. and going north. OK, and that's... And that's not cheap. That is a big cost. Do we have the infrastructure in place? That's, well, that's well, the key here. Well, that's what happens when you have the coalition stuffing up an energy, um, an energy transition. Snowy 2.0 is a coalition plan, never well designed, not part of a broader scheme. And, and so when Barnaby voted for it and said it was a great idea, it was because they didn't have an overarching plan for renewables. We want to have a system where the cheapest renewables are built, the cheapest storage is built, not some sort of captain's pick that Barnaby or no, his li Liberal Prime Minister may want, well, but we want to have one where we get the cheapest storage. Now, the cheapest storage is pumped hydro, right. not necessarily in some big mega project that Barnaby can cut a, some uh, ribbon on, but in, in distributed pumped... Yeah. It, it, in See, distributed storage, this... in distributed battery, and we know, not from me... But from the experts, from the market no, regulators the who wrong. look at it, if the experts are right, we wouldn't have a power crisis. Are wrong, but on one hand, you want to rely upon their but evidence. On the other hand, you want to reject world. it. There's not a country in the world our, that does it with 100% renewables. Our energy market re regulator says renewables and Can, storage, distributed storage, we, is the listen, cheapest way to keep let's the lights Let's look on. at the reality of this. We can't actually make the capital. All this stuff is 100% imported. We can't actually... The companies that run it 
are not running it because they want to help our environment. Chinese real estate companies are not running it because they want to help our environment. It's a swindle. They're running it because they make a massive buck. Well, they're, they're they make running, a massive buck. And this idea, this idea that somehow Australia will be completely different, and even though the price is going through the roof, even though it's going to continue to become more and more, fake, even though we're having brownouts, even though they're shutting off people's well, well, air conditions because there's enough, I'll, I'll enough power, I'll and horses. now you're I'll saying we're going horses. to have to have more pump renewables. Are we in a situation where we've got the, the Nationals um, politician saying we need to find corporations that are doing it for love? Is that what you're saying? Well, we need to find well, corporations that are going to invest in renewables for love. You're multinational organisations I'm a Green Senator, power, right? Power, I'm a Green Senator. The, People I don't think you're going to find a bunch of multinationals who are going well, to do it for love. If you think they're well, around, then great. Well, they're you know obviously they're going to do it because they think it's the most reliable way no, of investing no, their capital no, to it's, make a fair of return it's and to make a long fair it, return. Because they're sweet. It's None of them. The There's no return, corporation. But they need to the do that quickly. That's the problem. Do, Danica, the capital, there's, the there's the capital not a return is underpinned by the no, government. Let, let me have a we go. Have let me a respond. Multinational organisations that are guaranteed a rate of return by Chris Bowen. They borrow the money at 4.5%. Let me respond. I want to go to the jury on this because this is an interest. There's not a single corporation that will invest in coal-fired power stations. And that's not because they believe in renewable energy. That's not because they hate coal. Yeah. It's because they know right. it's a stinker. Well, let, me, let, let, me, let me go to the jury now. There's 240 of them in China. China. Uh, Julie, China's building them Julie in the middle. OK, it's a fired up debate. Julie, how are you feeling about our push to renewables? Well, first of all, let's park the politics. Park the politics because... We do have choices. We do have choices. We can press the pause button, but still progress. People want to know in Australia... And look, the vast majority of Australians believe in doing the right thing about the environment. They want renewables, but they want it to be balanced. They want the, they want the discussion to be everything on the table. Why don't we have nuclear on the table? Why can't we? What's the problem with it? Why can't we look at... Who are these people investing in the yeah. in the solar park? These all are right. all questions. People want sensible, Abs calm, balanced Absolutely. debate. Absolutely. Tom, we'll throw it to you. How are you yeah. feeling about the push to renewables? I think it's happening too quickly. Okay. Um, I think renewables is part of the discussion, but it's not the whole part. Yeah. Um, and we should be looking at nuclear, especially if we're getting nuclear subs. Okay, well, we're, we're almost out of time, but qu just very well, quickly, nuclear has yeah. to be part of this discussion. Well, it absolutely doesn't, because the, the, the UK... Well, no, by all means, talk about it, right? Look at the evidence. Look at the evidence. Yeah. Look at what has happened in the UK. They have been trying for two decades to open up one nuclear power station. Yeah. It's more than $30 okay. billion dollars Australian. If you want to pay five times for your electricity... Vote nuclear right. because that's Last how much seconds, it will cost. Well, well, it, obviously, five you, you times the electricity. All, you, they can't say that France, England, Canada, the United States, China, Scandinavia, um, all these countries okay. are all these the countries are stupid. All right, look, and we're the only we're, smart we're, ones. We're, this is a, this is a brilliant fight on debate and emissions. really good points by both of our panelists. But you've both had time to have your say. So now it's time to call <laughs> on the jury. The question is: Are we transitioning to renewable energy too fast? Time is up. What is the jury's verdict? Wow. OK, so an overwhelming... Everyone said yes, bar one. So 11 yes, one no. Susan, why no? Oh, well, I'm... I mean, not like I've police said to me, like I'm in, like live in Canberra, and like I, I like I can say, like I bus, and I, like I have a small house, and I don't generate a lot of electricity. Like I could get a solar panel if I want, and there's people in my street that have it. So, like I'm happy where I live to to transition to more green energy, but I'm I am anti nuclear because I don't want to have like a nuclear accident. Yeah. Okay. And, and what about you, Agnes? You said yes. Why? Because I don't think we've heard the whole story. Chris Bowen doesn't come and talk to, to anybody about anything. And I think nuclear has to be on the table. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, I know you're very anti-nuclear, but do you, do you concede that it's going to form part of our discussion? Not, not in any rational decision. You can, you can talk about it. But governments are going to come out five, and have to discuss this. They cost, it costs five times the amount no, to get nuclear power no, than it does. It, it costs $30 on, billion. Dollars. They keep and, on and saying fact, this. It's not we, we, have, we have a jury member from the ACT. One of the reasons the jury member from the ACT 
is, is, is no doubt persuaded about renewables is because the ACT has 100% renewables no. and their power right. prices have the gone down. 20 seconds last, last their power okay, prices have gone is, down. What, what, is, hap and what is happening it's in regional areas is that we are absolutely getting overrun with wind factories, solar factories, transmission lines. OK. So, the pr so what... Would you love it? Well, you know what? This is one of those debates where we could be talking about it for a very long time. Barnaby, we, Thanks, we love Sonny. the passion on it. Barnaby Joyce, David Shoebridge, great to speak with you both. Thank you so much for that fired-up panel.